Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jason Worley, and today we are in the engine dyno cell at WC Fab. And here behind me, we have our twin turbo LB7. This is the engine that will be in our new short bed race truck. So if you didn't catch our first video we did a few weeks back about our new LB7 race truck, things have snowballed slightly. I think I may have mentioned in that video that we were uh, going to take the truck that we bought and go race it. Might take it to the strip and just run it as it is for a while and, and see, see what we can do with it and see what we want to do, maybe, maybe, maybe make some changes. And it might have been a couple days later, the front clip was off of it and the engine was pulled out of it. We're excited to get it, start doing some racing but it was pretty outdated in a lot of our product that was under the hood. Many of the things were, you know, six, seven, eight years old. And if we're gonna go out there with a shop truck and do some racing, we wanna make sure we're promoting our latest and greatest and that everything's running as good as we can. So we decided to pull the engine and uh, tear it down. We didn't do a full tear down because it was a fairly recent uh, rebuild, but we took it down to a short block and we did some updates. We reached out to our good friends over at Fleece Performance got a set of their LB7 uh, cupless cylinder heads. The heads that were on the truck still uh, were original from the original build 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And it didn't have threaded cups, it still ran the standard factory style cup, which if you're familiar with LB7 high performance world, um, those are a notorious uh, problematic point of uh, combustion gas leak into the uh, cooling system. And the last thing we want to worry about, especially on a drag weekend or doing the sick week events, is having a major engine failure that's going to put us out that could have been prevented. So our good friends at Fleece have their new cupless heads, uh, which eliminates that stainless steel cup. So we installed a set of their heads, set of SoCal high pressure valve springs, and started putting the engine back together and updating it with all the latest and greatest from WC Fab. So you'll see we've got our new billet uh, Duramax exhaust manifolds on here. We've got our two inch stainless high flow up pipes. The turbocharger setup is kind of a cool combination. We, we talked with calibrated power and we wanted a quick spooling, uh, street friendly, um, you know, quick response because this truck is going to be doing the sick week and the drag week events and we want consistency. We don't want to have troubles with a big turbo setup that's difficult to spool on the line. Uh, requires a ridiculously loose converter. So we actually went with one of their hybrid stealth chargers in the valley. It's an IHI drop-in. It's a combination of their 67 and their 64. So it uses the 67 millimeter turbine uh, exhaust side so we can have that high flow to help make that uh, good peak power and that, that's beneficial in the compound application to have the high flowing turbine on the high pressure valley charger. But the front side to help with spool up and increase drivability, we stuck with 64 millimeter compressor. Uh, so that is what their hybrid turbo is. It's a cross between their 64 and their 67. On the atmosphere charger, the original turbo setup on this truck had a big massive uh, precision turbo out front. They work great. It's a little overkill for what our power goal is. We took a lot of weight off this truck and we didn't need quite as much power as what he was making uh, for what our goals are. And there's a lot of weight savings going from that big uh, large frame precision uh, 106 down to just a standard, uh, this is a box S488. So we went with a little bit smaller on the atmosphere turbo than what was uh, previously on the truck. Uh, but it's gonna be a quick spooling setup and it should get us the 11, 1200 horsepower uh, that we need um, pretty easily. So right now the turbo kit is uh, all raw, it hasn't been powder coated because um, we are making some changes during our testing and just wanted to make sure everything's good and that way we don't kind of worry about scratching up the nice powder coat before the truck goes back together. Um, but otherwise, to give you a little uh, insight on the dyno lab here, the, the engine dyno cell is, is a new addition to our shop. Um, we installed this about a year ago. Uh, we've been doing a lot of testing on our personal pulling trucks. Um, we've had about a half a dozen uh, different pulling engines on the dyno, uh, different combinations. Um, probably got a little over 100 runs under our belt now uh, with different setups and, and playing with different things and, and getting the dyno dialed in and making sure the water pressures and everything's good and our, all of our data acquisition is working properly. It will be our first run on this engine to get a baseline and, uh, and see where we're at. Um, we've got all of our data acquisition hooked up. Um, so that's the nice thing about uh, doing all this testing in the dyno cell uh, before we go out to the track. 
is we can do a lot of testing. It's easy to work on. We can get all of our data figured out. We can watch all of our pressures and know what we're dealing with before we go to the track and before we go out there and, and not waste a weekend going to the track um, because of something we overlooked and really just get the thing dialed in and, and working really well here uh, before it goes in the truck. Uh, originally, when we bought the truck, it had a set of 250% over extra G injectors and it was running a uh, really old school dual pump kit up with a, a 10 mil and a stock pump. Um, again, to help save weight and just clean things up under the hood, get rid of things that could potentially give us issues on those drag week week, on those drag week events, is we got rid of the dual CP3s, back to a standard serpentine belt and uh, no additional idlers, um, and get rid of some electronics and high pressure lines and all the extra things that come with those dual pump setups. Uh, at the horsepower level we're at, the 14 millimeter high flow extra G pump uh, is more than enough to suffice what we're trying to do. So we got with our good friends at Extra G, got a 14 millimeter pump in the valley, and we actually, believe it or not, downsized the injectors a little bit. Um, the 250s, again, a little overkill for our horsepower goals, and we wanted to have a setup that was really streetable and, and really drivable down low, and you know, streetability is just as important to us in this application as the maximum horsepower and you know, the drag racing. So we went to a set of 150s, uh, which should be more than enough to handle what our power goals are. So a lot of new pieces and, and things we updated um, when we had this engine apart. Uh, the engine doesn't have it on them now, but we would also have our billet valve covers that we'll be uh, installing on this engine uh, before we put the engine back in the truck. So the data acquisition, we're able to watch all of our pressures, all of our temperatures, and really know what this engine's doing uh, throughout the whole run and, and under full power. So we've got drive pressure and boost on both the high pressure stage and the low pressure stage. We're watching lift pump pressure, crankcase pressure. Uh, we're watching EGT on the, both the left and the right bank. Um, we have oil temperature, we have coolant temperature. Uh, we're gonna be running a set of electric fans on here uh, so that we can turn those on and off as needed. Standard fast uh, lift pump, we got a, the high flow fast 250 on there. Uh, but other than that, this engine is pretty much all catalog items. So this, this whole package is all available stuff that we sell uh, general part number items and there's really nothing one off or custom here. Um, this is a, a combination you could put together and go racing with uh, if you'd like. Uh, another thing I'll touch on that is uh, pretty important that anyone in the Duramax drag race world or even the pull truck world is familiar with is braking water pumps. Uh, the, the, the Duramax is pretty notorious um, in large RPM swings or even high RPM runs uh, seeing cooling system pressure spikes which leads to water pump failure. And that'll obviously take you out of a day really quick. It's not a fun job to do at the track. And we don't want to have to do any of that type of work at the track if we don't have to. So uh, again, from SoCal, we've got their coolant bypass kit, which essentially is a ball and spring operated relief valve that we tie right off of the pressure pipe coming off the water pump. And it uh, diverts a uh, pressure spike, if we have one, to the upper radiator hose. So we actually also have a pressure sensor for our data acquisition on the cooling system so we can watch cooling system pressure and uh, see what kind of pressure we're dealing with and if we see any spikes and to make some adjustments on that uh, relief valve if needed. Uh, one more thing that we like to have available when we're testing in the dyno is our O2 sensor. Um, so you don't hear about O2 sensor talk a whole lot in the diesel world, uh, but when you're tuning things and really wanting to dial things in really well or you wanting to build a setup that is uh, cleaner, let's say, than, than a polling setup where they're, they're pretty, pretty rich in fuel. Um, we can do that. Uh, obviously the smokestack here is going out the roof of the building and we can't see smoke output during the run without uh, having someone outside uh, watching that or, or videotaping it. But we do have that O2 sensor on the pipe, which is nice, right on our data readout uh, of the dyno. Um, we'll have our air-fuel ratio so we can see how that looks throughout the run and make changes if need be. So that is uh, kind of a quick wrap on what's going on in the dyno cell here. Um, we'll fire this thing up, get it warmed up, get a little heat in it, and uh, we'll make our first pass with it and see what we have some baseline numbers here and uh, see where it takes us. So here we are at the operator station at the dyno cell. Uh, we had the engine running for a little bit, got it up to temperature, got a little heat in it. Uh, we're going to fire it up here and make our first pass and see where this thing baseline's at and do a little tuning from there and get it dialed in. 
So all the data acquisition that I talked about inside the dyno cell, temperatures, pressures, air fuel ratio, oil pressure, everything like that. We've got all that on our control panel screen here along with our horsepower and torque. And then we'll also get the readout by 100 RPM uh, breakdown in a graph on the uh, upper screen after our run. So we've got a weather station in the dyno room as well. So we know the ambient temperature, uh, the humidity, and obviously your pressure as well. So from run to run, we can see what the room temperature is and the humidity is. And obviously there's a, a correction factor that the dyno takes into correction, uh, takes into consideration. Uh, we use the standard dyno correction factor. Um, so it'll make correction based on the uh, room temperature and pressure. So get ready to uh, make a pass here. So not bad for our first pass. I'm gonna check with Calibrated where we had our fueling set at, but 1,127 horsepower and 1,995 foot-pounds. Making peak power uh, right at about 3,100 RPM. And we made our peak torque at about 2,700 RPM. So I'm pretty sure there was a decent, decent fuel setup in there. I think maybe 1,600 microseconds. But I gotta double check what that was on the uh, EFI Live data log. So what we've got on the upper screen here is essentially all of our data points. We've got our boost and exhaust. We've got our air fuel ratio. It looks like we're right around about 17 to 1 on the AFR. Uh, we've got our intake air temp at the uh, Y bridge, so seeing what the intercooler is doing. We've got our EGT, our left and right bank. We're right around about 1500 EGT. We've got our crankcase pressure, uh, watching to see, make sure the engine's in good shape there. Only about 1.2, 1.3 pounds of crankcase pressure, so nothing at all to worry about there. Lift pump's keeping up fine, running about four, maybe five pounds of lift pump pressure. Our cooling system starts to run at about 35 PSI. We don't have any major pressure spikes, but the pressure spikes typically happen on a drag truck when it makes a shift, and it shifts from, say, fourth gear to fifth gear and does that big RPM swing. That's where you'll typically see a spike. Uh, but right now we're seeing about 50 PSI coolant pressure at 3,800, so not terrible. And then the rest of the data on our readout uh, we're monitoring the dyno and uh, all the temperatures of the room I mentioned earlier, the, the weather station. So we've got the temperature of the water coming out of the brake so we can make sure we're not boiling any water because uh, that could lead to inaccurate readings, inaccurate load. Um, so we're walking the, watching the, the dyno brake water temperature and then the dyno brake uh, water pressure to make sure that's all consistent from run to run. Um, the most important thing about dynoing is having consistent instrumentation, instrumentation and a consistent equipment so that you can make changes to the engine and to the tune and actually know what's happening and not worry about it being an equipment uh, issue. And then uh, we're watching the temperature of the room and the humidity of the room. So during that run we were about 80 degrees in the room with about 26% humidity and it had about a 5% correction factor. Uh, so that's pretty standard at those types of temperatures. Uh, as the room gets hotter or as humidity goes up, you'll see that correction factor climb uh, to make up the differences of the poor quality air. So all in all, not a bad first run. We're gonna spend some time with the uh, laptop and with our friends, uh, with our friend uh, Nick and Tim up at Calibrated Power and uh, get this thing dialed in, build a couple different tunes. Uh, probably somewhere, maybe a 900 horsepower tune, 800 to 900 for, for street. Um, for the drag and drive weeks and then uh, probably about a thousand or eleven hundred horsepower tune and then we'll see if we can have a max effort tune somewhere around that 12 or 1250 range. Uh, so we're not too far off right now making 1125 and just under 2,000 foot-pounds of torque. So that's a good start to our LB7 uh, dyno test and we'll have some updates here for you in the future. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned.